These pictures were filmed by guards at Woomera Detention Centre in February last year. They show scenes children, adults and staff witness sometimes daily in an Australian detention centre. For Woomera, this isn't an unusual day. There are demonstrations in three of the compounds and here a 19-year-old Afghan man has climbed into the razor wire. The man on the razor wire says that if he can't see the Department of Immigration about his visa, he'll kill himself. He starts cutting his arms with a razor. Somewhere else, a woman has tried poisoning herself with fly spray and a 13-year-old boy has drunk shampoo. A group of adults and children stands by as the man above them cuts himself. Cert so one has just been called for a resident hanging in the razor wire. Fuck you, you Fuck you. you, fuck you. Go away, children. Go away. It's not for you, huh? Come play. It's not for children. Last month, Woomera was closed. In the end, 80% of those detained there were found to be genuine refugees and given temporary visas. Uh, self -harm. Many who worked at the centre say they were pressured to stay silent about what they saw and did. It's only now that the full story is starting to be told. There seemed to be no accountability, uh, that they had they seemed to have laws, rules of their own that they could bend and break. Uh, it was very secretive. I think it's as simple as saving money. ACM's a private company. Uh, at the end of the day, the bottom line is the dollar, how many dollars they have made. I think, yeah, definitely, it's all about saving money, making money. <laughs> Tonight on Four Corners, key staff, including a senior manager, speak out for the first time. They tell a story of mismanagement, lies, cover-ups and relentless trauma. It's January 2002. For one man, it's the day he's been waiting for. He's just been given a visa. They've one Afghani resident here who's just received a visa. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Kurta Dad. Come on, mate. Come on. Yeah, thanks very much. He's been ready since 20 past seven out there. Come on, boys. Yeah, hey, uh, give him all the way. Hey. Come on, boys. Hey. He's a happy man. He's just got himself Don't a visa. Don't but on this day, this celebration is an exception. Across the compound, most of Woomera's Afghan detainees are on hunger strike. Hey, come on. Wake up. Excuse me. He's drenched. Can you try and wake him up for me, please? Master. 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 Germany. Call for a stretcher. Seven. Stretcher. Seven Medical. Over its three-year history, some of Woomera's worst hunger strikes were reported in the media, but others weren't, and pictures like these were never shown to the public. You OK? You want to go to medical? This hunger strike has gone on for nearly a week. It has a specific cause. 
It's three months since the US attacked the Taliban in Afghanistan, and the Department of Immigration has stopped processing most visas for Afghans. They've been trying to find out what will happen to them, but there's been no answer. Do you need any water, food? Freedom. I can give you food, you have medical assistance if you require. Cannot give you a visa. It's out of my power. What about medical assistance? You need any medical assistance? There are now 189 people on hunger strike. 62 have sewn their lips together, including two women and five children. ACM staff making this video are clearly disturbed by what they're seeing. Absolutely heartbreaking. Just basically, I see the compound all the time. I see hundreds and hundreds of people begging and crying, and I see people dehydrating in the sun. I see people with sewn lips and buried in the ground, because that's what they did. I see people slashed up and cut their throats and their arms. Ali Crace worked at Woomera for two years. It's only now she feels able to talk about it. She began as an office assistant when the centre first opened. There was Bessabot buildings and a few demountables and very limited toilets and uh, laundry facilities for uh, you know, a large amount of people. In Australia, Wacken Hut Corrections has a wholly owned subsidiary doing business under the name of Australasian Correctional Management with offices in downtown Sydney. Australian Correctional Management, or ACM, is a subsidiary of Wackenhut, the second largest detention company in America. In Australia, ACM runs four private prisons. In 1997, the Department of Immigration, or DEMA and later DEMIA, gave ACM the contract for its new detention centres. Woomera was built out in the desert, five hours from the nearest city and at the end of a closed road. In summer, temperatures often passed 50 degrees centigrade. We will be briefing people when they come in here um, on the nature of the facility, the environment in which it's been placed. It's not a holiday camp, um, nor should it be seen as a holiday camp. They are cute, aren't they? Within weeks, the centre, set up for 400 people, was overwhelmed by nearly a thousand. As each one arrived, they had to be processed within 48 hours. There were only three people to do it. Many of the refugees came uh, with lice, um, scabies. They were dehydrated. They did have diseases um, such as malaria and things like that. Um, and they were quite sick, so in this 48-hour process they were collapsing and fainting and vomiting and all that sort of stuff. There were two nurses and Ali, who had no medical qualifications. If they didn't process everyone within 48 hours, ACM would be penalised. The consequences from my understanding where there would be fines to ACM, Australian Correctional Management, for not um, doing the, the needs assessments in that time. Money, money penalties? I, I believe so, yeah. The detainees were sick and exhausted. Staff had no filing system, no set procedures, no official interpreters. There were people missed that had disabilities. Um, there was an incidence where there was a child with cerebral palsy that wasn't detected for three or four weeks later, and a child that had um, a heart condition that we didn't pick up until later, things like that. By April 2000, Woomera had nearly 1,500 detainees. You're talking over 1,500 people living in that compound uh, with you know, maybe two washing machines or three washing machines and five toilets. Um, no communication being passed to them about what's going on or what's going to happen to them. Uh, not enough, no resources or facilities set up for them to actually um, keep busy. Hello. 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 Even so, at first, detainees were hopeful they'd soon be given visas, and staff did their best to make daily life normal. Ali Crace by now promoted to welfare officer, set up a makeshift school.